This is my 2006 Fiat Scudo Combi, which is um, being customised into a camper van by Simon Lee of Middlesbrough when it was new in 2006. And I bought it from my friend Maggie in 2012 when it had under 52,000 miles on the clock. And as you can see, it's absolutely lovely and I don't know what I would do without it. Um, I've travelled about 3,000 miles a year overall to ukulele festivals, um, to go and stay with friends. Um, this was up at Hadrian's Wall in September 2014 and then December 2014. And the Wensleydale Weekender at Hawes for more ukulele fun. Then staying just outside Halifax for the Grand Northern Ukulele Festival in 2016 in Huddersfield. But then the bad news. On Sunday, April the 8th, 2018, I was going to go to my ukulele session but someone had broken in. They'd smashed the sliding um, door window on the passenger side, ransacked everything, stolen stuff, about 300 odd quid's worth of property. They'd um, damaged the glove compartment, pulling it out, stolen all my paperwork, um, tried to get in the back door but hadn't succeeded, but they'd left a sort of sharp serrated edge on the edge of the door and the hasp for the door lock was a bit bent so the lock didn't fit quite properly um, and they seemed to have disturbed some of the electric wiring because some of the internal lights weren't working. So but these were really quite minor problems the easily rectified. Um, the big problem was the broken window because it being an old model it's quite difficult to find a suitable unit to replace it. But never mind, I thought, um, I'm insured, everything will be all right. So after I'd phoned the police, tidied the van, cleared up all the broken glass, I phoned um, ERS Insurance. First of all, the department that deals with replacement glass, and then you have to phone in again to speak to another department that deals with repairs and with theft. Um, it was Sunday. So neither department could do anything at the time um, and they both said that I would get a phone call back on Monday. So first on Monday I got a phone call from a very nice woman at ERS um, who took all my details again and I explained about the damage and she was obviously very concerned that the vehicle was still on the road um, with just a temporary covering over the broken window and said she would phone Newcastle Accident Repair Centre and kept me on the line while she rang them uh, to as the approved repairers who would take the vehicle into their care that day and then repair it. Um, but she got back to me and said unfortunately they weren't able to collect the vehicle on the Monday, they weren't sure even if they'd be able to do it by Tuesday afternoon and she asked me if I had any suggestions of where I could put the vehicle indoors overnight um, until it could be taken to the approved repairers. She asked if there was a local garage that I knew who might be able to take it in and um, I suggested Parkside on Welbeck Road which is where I've had my car serviced and I've done my MOTs and I've always, always been very happy with them. So the lady from ERS asked me for their phone number and their postcode and asked me to hang on while she rang them to see if they would be able to help. And then she rang me back. She said Parkside had been extremely helpful and they were happy to take the van in and look after it. Um, I could take it up there today and she said and maybe I, if I wanted to I could get the repairs done by them rather than have to take it to these approved repairers, whoever they were. So that's what I did. I took the van up to Parkside a little later on. When I got there, 
the guy said yes he'd spoken to the woman from my insurance company um, but I'd come to the wrong place that he'd explained to her that I needed to take the van to their body shop and he'd given her the postcode and he'd given her the address well, I didn't even know they had another place a body shop but the guy said not to worry um, he would take it into that garage straight away to make sure it was safe and then he'd arrange for somebody from the body shop to come up and pick it up and take it down there so it would be safe. So everything seemed to be going well. I'll skip over the week of dealing with ERS to move straight to the Friday afternoon um, where I finally got to speak to somebody from the Tyne Tees Vehicle Repair Group at their Washington Centre, um, a woman who answered the phone I was trying to arrange for the approved repairers in Newcastle, Scotswood Road to take in the vehicle as the replacement window was planned to be put in by the auto windscreen people in Scotswood Road as well. They were very lovely. However, when I spoke to the woman from Time T's Vehicle Repair Group um, she told me that by the sound of the vehicle, from the information she'd received from ERS, that it didn't sound as though it was repairable. I was obviously very shocked because the damage was really quite minimal. Um, however, she told me that no, no, from what she could see, it didn't look as though it would be possible to repair it. And I didn't quite understand what that meant, so I asked her and she said, well, that would be up to the insurance company um, they would simply report to ERS whether or not they felt the vehicle could be repaired and so I asked her what the damage was that she'd been told was to the vehicle because this seemed so extraordinary. So she read me a list of damage um, it included items that I had mentioned but were grossly exaggerated as to the extent of the damage um, she started off by mentioning the glove compartment and I said yes, well that's obviously something that um, can be repaired and hardly makes the vehicle unrepairable. Um, she said that the lock on the back door had been broken off, which it hadn't. Um, she said that the roof had been damaged. Um, there's never been any damage to the roof. I've never mentioned any damage to the roof whatsoever. Um, she said that a fitting had been taken off the back door, which I haven't said. Um, and that the lights in the interior of the vehicle were broken, which I hadn't said. I'd said that I felt that the light, the wiring was probably disturbed where it connected to the leisure battery and it just needed tracing to do that. The lights themselves never mentioned that they were broken. Um, there was something else she came up with as well, but I was quite horrified. Um, and then she said, well, it's a 56 Scudo. Is it worth repairing? And at which point I, I couldn't believe it because I, I asked her what would happen if the vehicle they felt was not repairable and she said well it would probably be written off but that would be up to the insurers and I was simply horrified um, so I took it to auto windscreens and that's a slightly different story they were very very helpful I'm just going to move to the video of the repairs that have been done to all of the things that I've mentioned apart from the wiring um, the, and you'll see that virtually everything was done within a matter of a few minutes to actually repair that damage. So far from the vehicle being unrepairable, I will apologise in advance for the absolutely filthy roof, but the weather's been dreadful here and I haven't cleaned it yet. But you can see for yourself how easily repairable this vehicle is. Just a reminder that this is the main damage to the vehicle, the broken window and Newcastle Accident Repair Centre would not be involved in having anything to do with that anyway because that's dealt with under a separate part of the insurance policy to do with the glass repairs. 
So immediately after that very upsetting conversation with the Newcastle Accident Repair Centre, um, who told me without even seeing the van that it was either unrepairable or not worth repairing because it was only a 56 Scudo, not taking into account the fact that it's a customised camper van, that it's in very good condition for its age and that it has a very low mileage. So I phoned Parkside Garage to arrange to collect the van and they said, oh by the way, we fixed your glove box. So that's one thing that um, Newcastle Accident Repair Centre and ERS can tick off as an unrepairable thing that was so serious that's actually been repaired by Parkside without me even asking them to do it. And I took the van from there to Auto Windscreens in Scottsford Road um, where they had had delivery a couple of days earlier than they expected of the replacement window for the sliding door. I got to Auto Windscreens at four o'clock on a Friday and they were very good, um, offered me a cup of coffee, um, checked the unit and unfortunately they found that the replacement unit had been supplied was for a later model and for the driver's side door rather than the passenger door. However, the guy said, don't worry, I'll fit some perspex to this so that it's safe to be on the street and you haven't got to worry about having it indoors all the time. Um, go and make yourself comfortable in there and someone will get you a cup of coffee. So I went and did that and he did the work on the van. Um, and did some other, I think he was doing some other jobs as well, finishing off. And then when he called me to say it was done, um, he said, oh, while I was here, it wasn't too very much too difficult to do. I've um, sorted out your back door, um, smoothed down the edge of the door that was very, very sharp serrated edge, because I didn't know the correct materials to use, so that's done perfectly. And the hasp that was bulging out a bit still, he'd sorted that out as well. So that's three out of the four actual faults that I reported have actually been fixed by local garages without me even asking them to do them in a matter of minutes. And the guy at Auto Windscreens actually finished at five o'clock um, and I went off home very, very much, feeling much happier after encountering people who actually gave a damn. And I thought you also might to see, uh, like to see in addition to the vehicle being in generally very good condition that it's actually still pretty low mileage um, and as I haven't got a newspaper to prove that this is when I'm actually taking these photographs there's a bit of video here where you'll be able to hear Radio 4 News playing in the background. Formula One, the Red Bull driver Daniel Ricciardo has won the Chinese Grand Prix in Shanghai just in case anybody thought that was a reading from some time ago that is today and since I got the van in October 2012 I've traveled about 3,000 miles every year overall so it's pretty good mileage for a 2006 Fiat Scudo custom camper van based on a Fiat, Fiat Scudo combi um, 67,000 695 miles. Now the glove box that is such a serious, serious bit of damage here according to Newcastle Accident Repair Centre. So here is the glove box of the Fiat Scudo according to Newcastle Accident Repair Centre, something that is not repairable. Repaired. Thank you very much to Parkside Garage. The lock on the back door nasty but fully functional. The lock on the back door that never was broken, just some sharp edges that were just here, completely smooth. The man from the auto windshield very kindly just filed that down for me. The hasp on the back door lock. Hasp for the back lock which doesn't look too good but actually it works very well. The only problem was that this was bulging out a little bit so that it wasn't closing as snugly as it should, which makes a difference when you've got a camper van and lets all the cold air in. And again, the man, nice man from Auto Windshields. 
just very kindly flattened that a little bit better than I managed by myself. Fixed. And finally, the roof, which for some reason Newcastle Accident Repair Centre tell me is damaged. I haven't told anybody it's damaged. Uh, ERS have never seen it. I don't know why they would think it was damaged if it was them that told the Newcastle Accident Repair Centre that it was damaged. I've got no idea whatsoever this what this is about. It's a pure invention. The roof is dirty, but it's not damaged, and they wouldn't know whether it was dirty or clean or not anyway. So ERS and Newcastle Accident Repair Centre, without even seeing the van, claim that it's got a damaged roof. It hasn't got a damaged roof at the moment, and I've never claimed that it had a damaged roof. So I don't know where they get that idea. No damage to the roof. At least before it goes into it. If it gets to the Newcastle Accident Repair Centre, there really is any damage to this roof. No damage to the roof at all. I hope this story has a happy ending because before the end of May, I've booked to go to um, three ukulele festivals in Huddersfield, in Scotland, in Dumfries, and in Snowdonia, where I'm going to be uh, performing and running a workshop, and I'd planned to travel to all of them in my camper van. So I've got my fingers crossed that I've actually got a vehicle that's functioning and it's got its window replaced and that I don't have to worry about having it written off because a garage that hasn't even seen it thinks that it's beyond repair or not worth repairing. So keep your fingers crossed for me.